All right. Hello, people. Welcome to the Friday show. If uh, you guys, I'll let everyone get a couple seconds here as we file in. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is I have an empty chair. Guardo, man. This is why you guys, your team Guardo, shouldn't be. Team G's here right now. Team Guardo is not. So, Guardo's out. But I have a special guest today. We will make this better for you. I promised. We have Data joining us for the first time. Nature abhors an empty chair, Juki. <laughs> we, we couldn't let that happen. I am so excited. I finally talked you into joining us. Um, I'm not. Because <laughs> I know what happens when you have special guests in this chair. But I put myself at the mercy of our lovely fans. I appreciate it. Uh, yes, we will get to that. Uh, we do sort of have rules in place for uh, our guests. We did it at the Papa G last week. Yes, you did. <laughs> Actually, I can't complain too much because I, I voluntarily participated last you week. You did. You ate a cricket. But now the things left in the box are much more disgusting. So, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. So, we'll get there. Uh, but it is a long-standing tradition and rule here on the Friday show that when we have a guest, they eat from the box of doom. I didn't make the rules. I, I encouraged that rule when I wasn't involved, so I really <laughs> feel like I have to take the consequences of my actions. I, I don't know. I'm okay with it. I'll survive. Perfect. Uh, I saw PK in here. Hey, buddy, we do have a shirt coming for you. Uh, we're just waiting for it to come through the printer, so I apologize. This is almost just me showing you what is on the way, but you have won a awesome Team Juki shirt at some point, so we will get that to you. Uh, so yes, Guardo is sick. Uh, he could not make it. I really think it's for the better. We got Data instead. Um, sorry, Guardo. Uh, let's he see. He must be sick. I don't think he's even here to heckle. I us. know. I keep thinking like he's probably lurking or something, and we get to talk crap. But right, no, I, I, don't I don't even see him in. I don't see signs of him. So you know, at some point, I might actually sort of feel bad. Ah, uh, not today. Not today, Maybe but if not he's still today. Sick. Yeah. yeah, he's got a whole weekend to get over it, yeah. and then uh, Tuesday um, we'll have a really cool stream, all Far Cry Five launch efforts uh, with David Hodgson, which also today uh, we're gonna have David call in on Skype, and we'll have a nice kind of conversation with him, uh, find out what it means to write a guide. Uh, I'm sure, we'll field any questions that you guys might have for him. Uh, it should be pretty cool, actually. One day of David Hodgson is just not enough to encompass the yeah. extremity of his guide writing obsessiveness. So Hey, Guardo Jones is in there. Ah, we said his name three times and he appeared. Yeah, oops. Uh, Guardo, look, you've been replaced. So, you know. That's what happens. I, you know, this is what happens when you don't eat gluten. You... <laughs> Your immune system just Your tanks. Your immune system goes down and uh, and you end up sick all the or, time. I don't know. Could we blame some of the disgusting things we've made him eat? He has been losing a lot lately. Your your diet is too high in mealworms and... Uh, However, if you eel. think about it, I've now eaten just as much or more because I've also participated when we made Papa G eat crickets. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Well, you seem he's perfectly had, healthy. He's had zero crickets. I think it has to be the gluten. He had a baggie full of mealworms, though. Yeah, that was rough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who's calling? Legal's calling my phone right now. <laughs> Can't say that about gluten. Yeah, We can say right. it about gluten, gluten when specifically <laughs> referring to Guardo. Right, right, this, right, right, right. This yeah. commentary does not apply broadly <laughs> only to Guardo. Where's Prima Rob with the disclaimer? Right. So, you know, Juki is not a doctor. <laughs> uh, but um, legal calls me anyway. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. He loves to hear her from legal. Yeah. So uh, this will be fun. 
We'll go through some gaming news like we typically do, but we'll get your insight on things. And if nothing else, I'll just talk a lot and you can just go, mm -hmm. I'll just smile and nod. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I usually have questions about things I don't know about. Okay, that's yeah, fair. Let's do it. Uh, first up, I think, and this is a shame, uh, a way out. This is one that we've kind of circled as well as uh, one to play on the stream because it's couch co-op. There's so few games anymore that are couch co-op. That's true. Like, so few. Down to even Splatoon 2. Right. My daughter was so you upset. You assume they're going to be. Could not play it. Uh, last night, we were playing Sea of Thieves. And again, my daughter, I want to play this. Can I go upstairs on the other Xbox and play? I'm like, ah, it doesn't work that way. Because you can do co-op on that one, but you don't really know what the other person's doing, right? It's not like you can... Yeah, I mean... That's my biggest thing. Uh, Guardo and I played a little two-man ship at one point, and we're both running around. There is no way to tell where your other teammates are. Mm -hmm. um, you would think that at least they'd make an. I, I guess like if you pull up your compass, maybe like you I don't mind. I don't mind going through an extra hoop to see them, but there's got to be some way to right. pinpoint where. I mean, I'm else definitely are. gonna just wander off by you know distractions and not pay attention to what my co-player is up to. If, if there's nothing to kind of right. keep us together. But a uh, way out, I don't know that I'll be playing with my daughter. The uh, premise is that you're is two... Is it scary? Well, you're two inmates escaping mm -hmm. prison. And then once you're out of prison, then it's kind of all of these different missions to stay out and, and do different things. I think there's five chapters, maybe, um, all of which we've detailed on premiumgames.com. There's full walkthroughs for broken down by chapter. You really like prison games. <laughs> Apparently. Just, I've noticed that trend. You're into the uh, prison escape missions. You know, I would not fare well in prison. So. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't like to guess or test that theory on any of yeah, us. Yeah, no, that's, we're going to do everything I can to stay out of there. So, which is why legal is my friend. Yep. Sorry, coffee. It's Friday. It's life. That smelled good, too. Yeah. I hate it when it smells good. Right. Power of suggestion. Then I'm like, oh, I need to have coffee, and I'm yeah. going to go use this, the work coffee machine. <laughs> That's a mistake every time. So, Guardo, if you are still listening, uh, I did get us a copy of A Way Out. That is something that we will play together on stream at some point. Uh, I just think it would be a fun one um, because it is couch co-op. We you both need, play at the same time. You need Guardo. You two are uh, inmates oh, going we... way back. <laughs> We will, we will escape prison together. Um, I don't know. I would think that in this scenario, I would actually be trying to escape prison from Gordo. Oh, okay. Well, that's a... Right. So maybe this game is... Repeat scenario as well. on aside. It's actually one person trying to escape the other, and the other is just trying to chase after him. Okay. A torrid love affair. I mean, that's you and Gordo to a T right there. Right. Uh, there was some pirate fan fiction taking place oh. in our stream last week. That doesn't surprise me um, because Gordo is really into that fan fiction stuff. Yeah. Gordo, are you Which I can say with impunity because he's not here to defend himself. Uh, my daughter does play Fortnite and yeah, she, she, really? she is probably better, <laughs> better at Fortnite than me. Uh, both my girls will play Fortnite and uh, this will lead us into the next thing. <laughs> Every week we seem to talk about Fortnite. So at Seems like it's just going to become a weekly thing. We have a weekly Fortnite update. It's fair. I mean, it, I think it changes so fast that there's always new ground. It cover. does. It does. Um, and in fact, the I think it's 3.3 um, released this week, and with it came a new weapon. So now there's a heavy shotgun. So this ties in beautifully with my daughter. She, sitting at the table, was like, Dad, do you know there's a new weapon in Fortnite? <laughs> like no, let me check premiumgames.com. I'm like <laughs> confirm it. <laughs> I do. I, I I read that from premiumgames.com. However, I'm like, how, how do, do you, you know? know that? She's like, well, how do you know that? I'm like, no, <laughs> I know it because it's my job that. to know that. How do you know that? It's like a boy at school. I'm like, oh, good. That's good. All right. Yeah. She's uh she's got the uh, the talking points there. Yeah. So she's really really good at surviving. Not killing, surviving. That's a great skill. A great skill. And I think an interesting way to um, play. Yeah. So she's at least a little more adventurous. My older daughter <laughs> will play. And at one point, she's the one who came up to me and she's like, I got to 
eighth place. I'm like, that's awesome. So I'm watching her play, and I asked her, well, did you kill anybody? She's like, no. No. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I just so survived. She had a friend over last weekend, and they're taking turns playing. And she's like, no. She's explained to her friend, no, this is what you need to do. And she's like, this is my spot. And so she is literally, like, dropping down to where this little, like, shed is. And she gets in the shed and just sits there. <laughs> That sounds like David Hodgson. Like, what are you doing? This is not This is not the way to win in, in Fortnite. She got to eighth, eighth place. But she She's on to something. Yeah. I'm like, That's this game hilarious. is not hide and go seek. It's <laughs> Depends on how you play it. I guess so. What like, you're after. It does depend how you play it. So uh, they are on, I think, week five challenges of season three, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, one of the videos that we have on primagames.com is one of those challenges. So... We'll go ahead and play that real quick, if I can remember how to do all this. Does Mario usually push Epic has just unleashed the Fortnite Week 5 challenges, which means Battle Pass holders have a new set of objectives to complete. One of the Week 5 challenges involves following a treasure map found in Anarchy Acres to locate hidden treasure. Fortnite treasure maps can be tricky to decipher on your own, so we'll help you get a head start on this. We found the treasure map itself inside the Big Red Barn in Anarchy Acres. You may not find the map in the same place as we did, but don't worry. You don't need to find the map first to unearth the treasure. You can simply go straight to the treasure location. Also note that since these are Battle Pass challenges, you must also be a Battle Pass holder in order to obtain the treasure marked on the treasure maps. The Anarchy Acres treasure map in Fortnite indicates that there's a treasure located south of a large llama on a hill somewhere near a boot-shaped object. If you completed the Llama, Fox, and Crab challenge from week 1, you will immediately know where to start searching. To find the treasure, you must make your way to the northwest corner of the map and search in section B2. At the base of the hill with the large metal llama, search near a lone rock sticking up in the grass, southwest of Junk Junction. If you're searching in the correct spot, a golden Battlestar crest will pop up from underground. Collect the golden star to complete the week 5 Anarchy Acres treasure map challenge in Fortnite. Lastly, once you've collected the treasure, make sure to fully complete the match. The treasure won't count towards the challenge if you return to lobby immediately after finding it. And that's it for the video. If you enjoyed what you saw, be sure to like and subscribe. Check back every weekday for another Prima 365. And for more content like And then I push that button. That one's my job. That's your job? That one's that my button. job. You yeah. did it great. See? I made it happen. We need you, Guardo. Sorry, Guardo. You know, this is your fault. You and your immunities. Uh, so yeah, there's other challenges right now on Prima Games video on YouTube. Uh, if you want to see the rest of the, I'm pretty sure it's week five challenges right now. Um, a lot of them are covered both, <laughs> both there. Thank you, Control Freak. I'm nailing it. The button thing. <laughs> um, and just to go through, I saw I saw on chat. Uh, Amber and her husband look like they're very close to getting three stars on Overcooked. Yep, on everything. On everything. That is an amazing feat. <laughs> so I will stop everything I'm doing to congratulate you guys that the fact that you guys are married, play net together, and it has not resulted in either one of them like sleeping in the garage or, <laughs> right. you know, that game is... I, I mean, kudos to you guys and your relationship. That's fantastic. That is not an easy game. Guardo and I barely made it a few minutes in before Guardo was ready to kill me. Uh, it's because you kept trying to put gluten in the food. I, I, well, you know, because I was concerned about his immunities. And I didn't like his sanitary efforts. He just kept throwing things on the ground. He's like, oh, no, it's fine. You're gonna get our restaurant shut down. No, you're gonna tr you're gonna trip over it later, right? Right. Oh, Dragon Chef says almost slept on the couch over it. Oh, but there almost you're... is the key. Almost. You made it, you made it work, and yeah. you're you're one level away from full three stars. That is <laughs> that is bravo. <laughs> almost is fine. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> that is fine. Um, but yeah, if, I mean, congratulations, guys. Let us know when you get that last one because that's not easy. Um, what else is going on? So, one we haven't talked about in a little bit, uh, Dragon Ball Z. That is continuing to move along. It continues to be a topic on here because we keep posting coverage for it because technically there's a demand for it. Um, there is a big patch to it. 
And since that was something that people have come to and asked on premiumgames.com, uh, we did a video on it kind of outlining what that patch actually means. So we'll uh, show that one to you now as well. Button time. We recently found out that there will be a new patch for Dragon Ball Fighters. The new patch will be available on March 16th, and once again the replay structure will be changing. That means any replays that you've saved before the patch will no longer be watchable after the game has been updated, so make sure you find another way to record your gameplay, if you want to hold on to them. In addition, ranked and casual matches will now be best of 5, instead of the current best of 3. It basically means players will be able to choose the rematch option until one player has 3 wins. What's really interesting are the Z Unions. Players will be able to join what is essentially a fan club of your favorite character and earn rewards based on how long you're a member of that club. The longer you're in the club, the better the rewards will be. You'll also be able to access the offline lobby option from the title screen instead of the server selection screen like before. And then there are some minor fixes to some characters. For instance, for all characters, they fixed a bug that makes a character say the wrong name when calling a Z change or Z assist. Another one is Nappa, where they fix a bug that makes Cybermen collide with the opponent character and sometimes interrupts the latter's attacks. If you want a full breakdown of the patch notes, be sure to check out our article. And that's it for the video. If you enjoyed what you saw, be sure to like and subscribe. Check back every weekday for another Prima 365. And for more content like this, be sure to head over to primagames.com. Button. That one. Did I do it? Yeah, you clicked Sweet. two buttons. <laughs> Simultaneous. That's right, that was... it was good, it was seamless. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, Centauri, a 24-hour button press stream. That would be... Someone just... earlier was saying they're going to start a new eSport just for you. I like with it. your button timing. You know, I, I'm i not saying I'm pro level, but I'm close. You're you're kind of an innovator in the sport, so... You know, you have I get to, to, to define the, standard. the rules, yeah. right? I like it. Just... You know, um, we all have our. our but niche. would you have to compete with Guardo, or have you surpassed him? Do you think? Uh, see, it's different when he only has I one have, button to press. I have far more finesse in button pressing. I've played games with Guardo. He's button mashing. Uh huh. Completely different. That would be a critical commentary distinction in an esports situation: mashing versus pressing. Uh, yes. And who does it with flair? Right. And like, you know measuring sort of the springiness and and your finger bouncing off and how it clicks pressure like, I, yeah. I think we've got a whole thing ready to go here. yeah i'm i'm so ready for that 24 hours practicing <laughs> I will. we'll take competitors soon could you imagine doing that for 24 hours uh. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to put the button below and then let gravity do most of the work yeah i like it so another title that came out this last week uh, is another one that Guardo has been waiting for forever, and another one that he's going to ultimately end up missing. What's that? Kirby All Stars. Oh, no, yeah. Kirby, not All Stars. It's Kirby something. Allies. He has been talking about this game forever. Can't wait for it. I think he even has a little Kirby tattoo on his shoulder. If you've ever seen it, <laughs> I've never seen his shoulder. <laughs> it's it's pretty cool. He absolutely loves it. However, he's just he's just not around. Which makes it really hard to play this stupid Star Allies game that he's been working so will, hard to push for us to play. I will issue a mea culpa for part of that. I'm the one who made him travel. I won't take the blame for him <laughs> getting sick, though. He clearly doesn't know the airplane slash hotel protocols, so I'm going to have to do some uh, remedial training with Guardo yeah. to teach him about uh, Clorox wipes. And hazmat suits. You always travel well, in a hazmat suit. Yeah, I mean... It freaks out the other passengers, but you're safe. <laughs> but then you get that moment of, of sort of simpatico and recognition when you see that one other person on the plane who knows the correct way to travel in a hazmat suit. Yeah. I was on a plane not too long ago, and the person behind me is telling the person next to them, I have never had the flu this bad. Like, oh, on an airplane? Yeah. I'm like, oh my I God, I are you kidding me? I don't know. If I, I, like, lady, I'm like doing this the whole flight. Right. Like, like please make this person get off this plane. Yeah. They need a medical ejection. You would think. Ejection. But 
I don't know. What is Yuki's problem today? Oh, they're defending poor Guardo. We've got some Team Guardo people in here right uh, now. You know, this is what happens when you call in sick. Yeah. You have to take a little track. You get to take a little bit. I think bit. we're going to change your minds by the end of this. We're going to all be Team team Juki at the very least. Right. Most I, We've got a few Team Data people in here today. Ah, uh, yeah. But, but I don't know where Helba is. I really was hoping to get to see her. I'm sure Helba will show up will, a little later. Show right. up. I'm happy to see all of you, but Helba is, you know, I'm number one. Right. And I, I can't argue with that. And I think even with the Team Jukis, the Team Guardos, at the end of the day... We are all backseat to you. It's well, the way it's nice always been. Well, that's nice of you been. to say. It's, it's absolutely true. I they thought you all... were going to say we're all Team Link deleted. I mean, we are. We're yeah. all encompassing. However, uh, if if you really... Who doesn't like me anymore? If you really ask all of them, you're I'll still change your one. mind. I'll change your yeah. mind. <laughs> Guardians. No. It's a cool name, though. It is Guardians. cool. I'm a little envious. Me too. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Uh, we've had like Juker's Wild is is one of those. That's good too. Um, Juconians was another one that that sprung up there. Um, but oh, Shadow Fox, we can change that. What's Juki, that? Juki is just a slow reader. What do you say? Shadow Fox says I'm Team Juki, but he ignores me. Oh no, that's not true. You gotta pay attention to your teammates. You know. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Captain Juke Sparrow. There's there's all sorts that's of good, ones. That's yeah. good. But ultimately, you know, we are going to throw some salt at Guardo today for calling in. That's he just did what we the do. right thing, he but did. we still have to punish him for it. Absolutely. How mad would we be if he actually showed up oh, and got germs all over the stream lab? It is true. And we know he's in chat, so you know, we know he he's could alive. He could defend himself if he wanted uh, right. to. Which means we if he can... could lift his feeble fingers to type. <laughs> right. Uh, what else is going on? Nino Kuni 2 has just come out. Um, and that one has actually been labeled as the Prima Games Game of the Week. Uh, nice. I Excellent did, selection. Right. I did not put a graphic up for it, um, but you guys can go to primagames.com. You guys can check out the full write-up on why you should be playing it. Um, basically, our analysis of the game and basically why it's the number one game this week. Uh, at least... Why we think so. Why we think mm -hmm. so. Um, I know it was a close neck and neck between that and Sea of Thieves. Um, personally, I've only played Sea of Thieves, not Nino Kuni, so it's kind of hard for me to say one way or the other. But um, but there are also many uh, weeks. Yeah. So sea Every of, game will get its chance. Sea of Thieves is one that, you know, there's been a lot of talk about how much longevity they have. Um, we had a conversation with it yesterday on Control Freak Show. I've been seeing online, there's a lot of things about how to make it last longer, customization, some of the things. I have a feeling that there will be a lot more to it. Mm -hmm. But I gotta say, even though the game recommends against it, I kind of enjoy soloing. Hop in my Just ship. Just sailing the seas. I don't have to worry about anybody else. It's kind of relaxing. Um, I do like some of the puzzle aspects of it now that I'm getting higher level maps. Um, some of them are like three parts, so you have to find the island, go to the island, and once you step foot on the island, the next clue appears on your map. Mm -hmm. And so one of them last night was I had to go find these chests with barnacles on them, and it, it has some quirky little riddle about like lifting the light. I'm like, what the heck is this talking about? I'm looking all around. I could not find any damn light. Uh, ultimately, I realized it meant I had to use my own lantern. Ah, and one of the buttons actually raises the lantern. So once I did that, my lantern like turned green and glowing and... Showed you the path? Showed me the next clue. That's pretty cool. And then I had to go find something else. And then it's like, have to take nine paces to the south by southwest. and Proper then... treasure mappery. Yeah, yeah I, like I actually it. like that aspect of it. Um, I, you guys might all know this. I did not know it initially. I was counting my steps by kind of like pushing forward on the control stick, like one, two. No. If you use your compass and you raise it up, uh, with like the right trigger as you're walking, it will vibrate the controller and count the steps for you. Oh, very cool. Little tip. I didn't realize that until way after the fact. That's but, good because I know I know a lot of uh, our our peeps were trying to get in the game and play, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
with Guardo out. I know, right? Uh, with, what? <laughs> with Guardo out today, um, I'm thinking that maybe I'll do some casual Sea of Thieves later. Um, if anybody is in chat that maybe wants to play with me, maybe we'll go that route and we'll do a four-man crew. Fun. Um, you know, with anybody who wants to play since, since Guardo can't. Uh, well, well, if he's if he's feeling strong enough, maybe he could be part of the team. Man, no, you, 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 you know, he's he had to walk the plank. We've done that. We know what kind of pirate he is. I mean, do we really want that kind of wild card? I, I don't know. We'll let the other pirates in my crew decide. Uh, what, what we should do with Guardo. All right, I think that's fair. But uh, Let the mob decide. <laughs> with that, um, if you guys are just getting into Sea of Thieves, here is a little video that we put together on Prima Games uh, that kind of gets you started. Getting started in Sea of Thieves can be very daunting. Especially if you haven't played any of the betas up to this point. The good news is we have spent quite a bit of time learning the secrets of getting started in Sea of Thieves. So let's give you the breakdown. The first thing you need to do before you set sail is prepare to set out on your voyage. This includes a few different things. First off, you'll want to grab as many planks, cannonballs, and other items that you can find. Store them on your boat and then go back for more. Once you've grabbed all the items that you can, it's time to grab yourself a voyage and vote on it. With the voyage in hand, head back onto your ship. Do one last look over and then vote on the voyage in the captain's cabin. Now that you have your voyage, it's time to set sail. The four main roles that you need for sailing is someone on the wheel, someone on the sails, someone on the map, and someone on lookout. If it's easier for your crew to have a quote-unquote captain to give out orders, then pick one. If not, make sure you're just communicating at all times, especially as lookout since you need to give your crew plenty of time to turn the ship. If you're on the sails, make sure you lower the sails in order to actually move the boat. You will notice white wispy wind lines in the air. Use the pulleys on the side of the ship to move the sails around until the air lines are hitting the sails in the center. That will allow your ship to go at top speed. Steering and lookout are pretty self-explanatory. If you're on the wheel, just make sure you're going in the right direction. And if you're on lookout, keep an eye out for rocks and other ships. If you're on map duty, you'll need to find the destination for the voyage and make sure that you and your crew are going in the right way. Lookout and map navigation Navigator can be a shared role, but breaking it up into two makes it easier on your crew. When you found the island on your treasure map, it's time to look for the treasure itself. Many early quests will have a point marked on the map. However, others will require you to solve riddles. You'll need to react accordingly and look out for things in the environment when solving these riddles. Remember that you always have a compass that you can use to check directions. If your map shows where it is, simply run to the spot and pull out your shovel and dig it up to collect it. After you've found your treasure, you're going to want to get it back on your ship. When it's secured below deck, have your navigator set course for the nearest outpost. Here, you'll want to offload any treasure that you found on the gold hoarder, or to the proper faction. You may also want to go ahead and purchase a new voyage, and then get back onto the sea. These are just the basics to get you started. The more you play, the more you realize how deep this game is. So get out there and start sailing. And that's it for the video. If you enjoyed what you saw, be sure to like and subscribe. Check back every weekday for another Prima 365, and for more content like this, be sure to head over to primagames.com. Lots of buttons, simultaneous. Yeah, you really, you really just... I am getting so good. Nailed that one. So good. Uh, Helba, welcome. Look it. I got data on stream. Uh, <laughs> it does mean that we lost your hero of the day. Guardo is not here. I feel like, but I feel, I feel like, like this you is kind a better... of have earned yourself. May I mean, I can't speak for Helba. She has to make the call. But maybe you have ranked up a little bit by being so adaptable with Guardo's Ebola. I I feel. We'll see what she thinks. I feel like I'm trying. I'm little, trying really hard. A little hard. promotion. Yeah, uh, I'm making do when Guardo's not around. And I am giving Guardo a lot of crap. He really is uh, sick, and he <laughs> he does write guides for us as well. And so he has been working on a project. He's been hard at work. Can we say what that project is now? Um, let's 
Let's wait till next week. Next week. Yeah. Next week, we will talk about what Guardo's been working on. Uh, I think, I think we can do that. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Uh, so that'll wait till next week on next week's Friday show. Uh, whether or not Guardo's here. <laughs> We hope he will be. You know what I just realized? This is an elaborate effort to avoid not eating something because it's oh, still his turn. He's, oh, it is that still is his turn. So sneaky of him, right? We're gonna have to add some really bad I, things. To I the box yeah, game. I think that's right because I don't think he was aware. Like last week, he got Papa G. He probably didn't feel too guilty about that, but I hope. That he feels pretty guilty yeah. about whatever I end up consuming later. <laughs> and to think, I double-crossed Papa G. You did. <laughs> on, you know, Guardo's behalf, sort of. But yet, now I'm realizing this is, a, this is the long play. I think you're right. Yeah. I mean, and there's a distinction, too, because with Papa G, you kind of lured him in with the promise of something pleasant in the Box of Doom, and then, like bait and switched him, mm. I am under no illusions <laughs> that there's even going to be anything nice there's in there. The, I just know nice in there. that the only thing in the box that I was like, oh, that wouldn't be so bad, you ate last week. So We ate last week. Well, yeah, I mean, but you had a cricket. I had yeah. one cricket. I didn't have to eat the whole. Uh, yeah, Juki the Savage. It was pretty savage. And I think the week before that, I ate a donut while he was eating from the box of doom. That's, um, I mean... True Juki is starting to come out. <laughs> you just have to kind of make them really know that, like, get good or eat garbage. Or eat garbage, <laughs> right. And I have to be careful, too, because I'm going to stop being able to con guests into my show. You you have to mix it up a little just so that they aren't sure what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the uncertainty of drawing whatever the thing is is not enough. Like, I think maybe you do have to sometimes sneak in something like, really nice yeah like there's a snickers right but no coordinating card right you just have to draw <laughs> you, <laughs> there's just a just snickers the but there's snickers. no chance that you can draw it i love it uh, <laughs> see this is why you're in charge of I, the box of doom you know i like, know garrett it's... squardo started it but you you're really owning it it's you know i know it's so good so good there's so many options Okay, so one of the things we were going to do today, uh, which I think is really cool, as you guys all know, Far Cry 5 comes out on Tuesday. We are going to do a full Far Cry 5 launch day stream. We're going to have the guide author, uh, David Hodgson, actually playing the game. Gordo and I will sit and, and watch. We figure that's a much better alternative to us playing and him trying to tell us how to play. Let's let the person who has been playing this for months... For a kajillion hours. <laughs> who's got... Many, many, many hours behind his belt. Actually be the person in taking us on a tour of Hope County. I love it. So that will be the plan for Tuesday. However, he has agreed to Skype in right now, and we'll have a little interview with him uh, and get his thoughts on the game, about being a guide author. Any questions that you guys might have, go ahead and, and populate those. And uh, maybe we can even talk him into a tour of our or of his office of his of his writing den yeah I, it, I think it would be so cool. it's pretty cool yeah. and he has done interviews before and and pictures of his office have been in magazines yep um his, his writing office is famous i think it would be really cool yeah yeah we'll see if we can All talk right. into it so do you want to see if you can get him on yes and then we will uh We'll switch it. So, if you want to go to that go computer, there. probably. I think that's going to be the easiest. I have to go to the buttons. Go to the buttons. And uh, bear with us one second while we try and get our guide author, David Hodgson, on Skype. And I'll drink coffee. Because... Are people voting but I really for you? Feel below? Only two, but I feel honor bound to do it. David. He probably. Oh. Let's see. Can. There he is. Let me turn the um, window on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, go for it. There it is. David, can you hear us? Okay. Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Can we Perfect. hear you? See if we can hear you, or if we I need to put you. on headphones. 
Here, let me uh, turn you up a turn little bit. Up. And we'll Everyone see. in chat, just let us know if there's too much echo. I think we should be okay, but you tell us. All right, so look at that. We're already getting started right off the bat with a little tour. Is this your, is this where the magic the happens? The battle station. Can you hear me? Excellent. Me? Yes. I can. Um, chat, let us know if there's an echo as we have the computer up to also hear him ourselves. Um, so if there's a huge echo, please uh, chime in, we'll, let us we'll know, adjust. and we'll adjust. Uh, Shado and I do have headphones that we can put on if need be, um, but hopefully you just guys can hear him chilling just out fine. my truck. <laughs> just in, uh, uh, Hope County? listening to some uh, no, just, uh, not yet. Listening to some uh, cult FM. Nice. All right, so no echo, perfect. So David, thanks for joining oh, us. Um, I think this is really cool for our audience to kind of get a glimpse behind the scenes of not only uh, you personally as one of our top guide authors, uh, but just behind the curtain of the guide writing experience and, and what it means to be a guide author. So <laughs> I think Guardo might chime in and say, you know, asterisk, guide experience, not typical. <laughs> we'll have so, to get a tour of Guardo's writing done next, just ooh, for, yeah. for comparing yeah, and contrast. Yeah, let's see uh, office to office, right? So David, I think first off, how long have you been writing guides for uh, us for you guys, it'll be my 18th year. So uh, August the 6th, 2000 is when I did my first Prima guide. Uh, but I've been writing guides for other folks a few years before that. My first guide that was a full guide was uh, Chirok 64 for the uh, N64. And that was for Game Fan books. If anyone remembers Game Fan magazine. But I also did uh, something in the UK before that. But. Um, so about 22, 23 years. I love the fact that you know down to the exact yes, date it's, uh, when you it's, started. It's, uh, it's obviously made an impression well, upon you. This office is built on strategy guides. <laughs> and you have quite a collection yes, in there, if we, I believe. Yes, uh, if we walk this yes, way. We, uh, we, walk this way. We, we just made your screen oh, a lot okay. bigger so that people could really see. Oh, oh, hold oh on. my goodness. Wow. I think your library is bigger than what we currently have stored I think so. at our, Prima Games. Our library definitely well, does not have a ladder. that's because I've stolen some of your books. That's because I've stolen some of your books. I have an Alone, <laughs> Alone in the Dark book from uh, the 90s. Oh, hold on a minute. Let me pause my game. Something's happened in Hope County that I wasn't aware of. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, don't... No spoilers. Don't show any of that. But... Um, <laughs> So we have a we have a question for you um, from Power Biscuit as the tour proceeds. Um, when you start writing, where do you uh, start? I normally start with the map. Well, no, depends on uh, what what me and a co-author are doing. So if we were doing say mm -hmm. Far Cry Five, uh, I would start and do all of the missions, and I'd take about a month. To, well, depending on the the schedule, uh, I do all of the missions, all of the quests. And then if I'm doing the atlas, I would also at the same time start plotting points on an atlas and then get the atlas going and then sort of keep on going until the wheels come off. No, until the deadline's met. That's what I've been <laughs> this is uh, this just sorry. Uh, so uh, quick I... aside, first strategy guide I did for Prima. There it is. I'm a classic. Two. Nice. Two. Boy, how... How different yes, things look these fonts days. have changed for a start. Yes, fonts have changed yep. for a start. <laughs> yeah. That's like our original red yep. banner across the That's top. OG. Yep. Uh, I, I just want to point out a comment from Simple Haley. She said, that is a collector's well, dream in there. Haley yeah. is such a collector. Yes. I feel like that is just That's high praise. a major these are all, compliment. Yeah, so everything, everything from yeah. this... These four levels, or these four shelves down, uh, and I've got multiple copies. It's not like it's one copy, but everything is written by. I would you. say ninety-five percent of it, just in case you know we see the Grim Fandango guide that I've stolen from Prima. That's why you don't have it in your library. Uh, but I, I didn't write that. But I did write uh, the Godfather guide. 
You, I, I, I remember. Had some small game called Fallout. Small game called Fallout. Just, a, just a minor little <laughs> just quirky And then a Borneo thinking man. And then a Borneo thinking man. <laughs> That's so cool. You definitely have the coolest office of, of anybody you. I know. Oh, Amber, Amber, you have the Zelda nice. box set. That's awesome. Let me, let me just touch that for a second. People still, yeah. So, David, with so many different titles under your belt, what is what is maybe your favorite or most fond title, um, either from a guide perspective or it's simply a toss from up gameplay? Between, wait it's for a it. Toss up between. Hold on, there's a a mach, an early machine gun blueprint that I, I need to check out first. Uh, it's either <laughs> cool. this it's one or nice. this one. So I don't nice. know Witcher or Skyrim. They're together. So sweet. Uh, Witcher has a particularly fond place in my heart because um, they named a character after me in the game. I don't think I was aware of that. I, I knew... I don't think I ever encountered yes, the character, he, but I knew. He's, a, he's in Novigrad he in and he's there. a bookseller called a Marcus T. K. Hodgson. <laughs> you don't no, have a character no, in Skyrim, no. David? No, oh, no. no. Well, I mean. How many pages do you have to thinking. write to get a character? <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, uh, oh, there's somebody else in this office as well. And isn't that squirrel? <laughs> she's ha no, she's having a snooze she in. She's having a nap in the place that she, you know, isn't her bed. Obviously, that's what you. I mean, that's the right way to do it. Is you make the bed really comfortable, oh. and then you go nap right next to Hello. it. Hello. Oh. Aww. It looks like you just gave her a it's hot wing. It's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> I've got uh, <laughs> over here. We've got, of course, the. Uh, sarcophagi I've got the mummy here and then uh, of course we've got the daddy over here <laughs> oh <laughs> the way I tell them. and we joked about it the other day but they are not no, actually they, in the they, fridge, they, right? uh, they do hold they actually, they actually hold have some mummies. arcane devices inside called CDs ah. <laughs> weird <laughs> so cool that's, those are the sarcophagi right. archives right there. Right. Nice picture of Cthulhu there. Nice picture of Cthulhu there. So is there any games, once you're done with a project, that you actually go back to and, and continue to play? Or dare I say, nope. play with No, fun? no, I, uh, that's a, no, I'm kidding. No, no. Uh, I, obviously, I play Witcher, uh, or I played Witcher. The issue that I have is that as soon as I finish a project, Prima calls me and goes, I've got another project for you. And I go, right, so Starting there's sort of limited days. downtime. So what I've just, in order not to get burnt out, I, I, I started a second hobby, um, which we may talk about uh, later. But uh, I, I would probably say that I, uh, once you've done eight to ten hours a day of, of gaming, uh, you stop gaming. At least when you've done it for 20 years. At least when you've done it for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's understandable. And It's uh, more fun when you don't, when right. it's not work. Yes, that's true. Right. Well, so yeah. I've, I've, I mean, I've actually been playing quite a lot of Far Cry 5 outside the realms of the guide because I found it to be, you know, it has that same entertainment as the previous ones. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't been able to take it for a spin yet, but I'm just hearing really well, good we'll things We'll be able about to uh, <laughs> check it out on Tuesday, I believe. Guardo, yes. Guardo says he, he's he's not agreeing. He still plays outside of work, but um, Guardo has a problem. He has a Steam problem. He has a Switch problem. He has a Switch problem. I don't feel like he's a an objective uh, viewpoint. I, uh, this, uh, yeah. I also just have to author. pace myself now that I'm decrepit. <laughs> well, and you play you play the big open world, never ending RPG do. games like this one. I certainly do. Yeah. Like this one. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. my biggest book. You know, having written guides way back in the day, you know, 
I could not imagine trying to write today's titles. No. Like, I, I simply, you know, I had it easy writing things for Nintendo 64, you know, having to do it now, I could no, it's, not uh, imagine. So it, it can get quite stressful. It's hard work. That's what a lot of people uh, may not realize, that uh, it's more than a full-time job. It's more than a full-time job. Yeah. Well, and I think that's one of the, the things I've had the most trouble explaining to people over the years, and you'll have a fascinating take on this, is it's not as easy as you would think to sit down and play a game and tell somebody right. else how to do it. Right. it. It takes a very special mind and ability to, to one, convey your thoughts accurately, but to continue to come up with creative ways of saying this. You have to thing. get it correct right. as well because, we, the, you know, and, and right up until the last minute, the game could change. Right up until the last minute, the game could change. Yeah. Yeah. So you have just completed Far Cry 5. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how that experience was without giving anything away so, until Tuesday? Uh, I started probably the end of October. So I've been in Hope County for a while. Good few months. That's given me a... Uh, a decent amount of time to get used to where everything is. Uh, so what I did is I started and I, I uh, went through all of the missions and then started to do a map. The map itself, I think, took about two months. And I'm, I'm not allowed to reveal anything on the screen, so I won't, sh I won't show you the maps. Nope. But they have a lot of points of interest. So... Um, I will interject real quick. So the, the map itself in the guide looks phenomenal because it's folded up like like a traditional it's like a map. Road map it's like a road map and it's huge um it's one of the few things i wish i could show right now because it's done so incredibly well um but i guess tuesday we'll there was a labor of love uh, in particular for that uh simply because um it took so long to do and um we wanted to show everything well i mean some of us wanted to show everything and then some of us prevailed. Uh, so I, um, oh, look, I've got a Hideo Kojima signed Metal Gear Solid 2 pamphlet. Yes. yes. That's there. cool. When was that signed? A while back. Because I, uh, I did a book for him uh, in my... <laughs> I love that we just had to peer through the ladder. That's awesome. Necronomicon. That, I was going to yeah. say, that looks familiar. Don't want to get Hauntingly too close to that. Familiar. Yeah. Don't stick your hand in there. Uh... Uh-oh. Ritual complete. <laughs> You've got so much um, fun stuff now. But I, um, um, but I then... I, um... Guardo, you have to build yes, your this own shed. shed. Is, uh, this is what you just got to do. Well, this is what I, you know... This is, you do. this is a culmination of a few years of, of shed building. So I, you know, got some. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. Gordo has to start Get your somewhere. Get shed plans ready. A nice, a nice. Uh... So, what is something about Far Cry Five in particular that you think people will really enjoy, unique to this um, one versus the others? I think the fact that it's set in Montana and there's a, an area of f familiarity. I mean, if you're sort of driving along country lanes in the states. Uh, you sort of get that familiarity that you perhaps didn't get with previous iterations. And um, you have, uh, without giving any of the story away, the story's fantastic. I mean, it's really well done. And the, um, the people that you're up against are uh, lunatics, but perhaps in a way that hasn't been seen before. It's, it's not really a superficial... Sometimes the bad guys in video games are really superficial. But in Far Cry 5, the, there's a lot of layers to them. And there's a lot of, because it's a cult, there's a lot of sort of mind games. I mean, literally, physically, sort of mentally in the game that, uh, that cause you to sort of, you know, it's quite startling, some of it. It's quite startling, some of it. Wow. Uh, Dark Queen Helba had a really interesting question about maps um, and how we create them. Um, David as he alluded to earlier, can can tell you in great detail that the process he goes through for getting all of the labels and locations onto a map. He is the king of the atlas. But um, uh, we don't always, we aren't always able to get those maps, those base maps provided from the developer. Sometimes, you know, it's just a 3D, it's a 3D situation and we're working in 2D. 
So we have um, several really talented map makers. Uh, Jasper Gibbons is one of them. He pops into the chat sometimes and he has some arcane techniques that he uses to translate footage of a game into a two-dimensional map that has all the detail that authors like David need to go in and put all of those <laughs> labels onto. Right on time, Jasper. <laughs> so yeah, Jasper just popped in and said, hello. So if anybody didn't know, as, as Jasper Gibbons often pops into the stream and interacts with us, uh, he is one of those talented individuals you just uh, alluded to. Uh, he does a lot of maps for us, and he's fantastic. Also lives Shit, in the shed. It a different kind, though. Oh. Shed, that is uh, nice. Uh, where it's at. <laughs> it's lead lined. <laughs> Jaspers. But uh, maps obviously key part of the guide, so they have to be correct, um, and you have to sort of work with the developers uh, to sort of ascertain where everything is. And of course, during the final stages of the game sometimes stuff changes so you have to double check everything and then check it again and then keep on checking it until uh, it goes to print all right so from a, a the author's perspective what's your elevator pitch as to why someone would need Barbara to pick up this has, uh, obviously a huge amount of expansive scenery to explore both uh, vertically and horizontally uh, so having a map to show where all of the uh, hunting spots are, for example, and where every single character in the game, we have little diamond icons with uh, portraits of every single dude that has a name in the game. And uh, those guys wow. usually give you a, a mission. So having that information is, is sort of pretty critical. Uh, knowing all of the guns, knowing all of the uh, vehicles, knowing all of the missions, uh, but without any sort of major spoilers. Um, and, you know, the, each section is self-contained. So, for example, the, the Atlas won't, you know, give you any horrible spoilers except tell you where things are. Now, the Atlas nice. has also been further subdivided. There's regions in the game, but I've further subdivided it into sub-regions. And then each of those maps in the guide has locations where even the smallest amount of ammunition can be found. So if it's just a small little heap of barrels and detritus at the end of a road, but that has a possibility of having a, uh, uh, you know, a first aid kit or something, or medi medikit they're called, um, then I've plotted it on the map. So the map is exhaustive. If you, uh, you've probably seen there's a grappling uh, hook in the game, which allows you to scale rock faces. And sometimes that's very important, especially in Whitetail Mountains, for you to get to uh, upper locations. So the maps in the book have uh, access points where grappling locations are. So it's pretty exhaustive. Uh, I also would be remiss if I didn't mention that we had a, a co-author on this project called Kenny Sims, who was invaluable in helping out with uh, the weaponry and the training and uh, other uh, aspects of the guide, so uh, hats off to him. And he, he really should be doing a Sims guide. He really should be doing a Sims guide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did have a question. Elevator, sorry. Um, Dark Queen Helba is, is curious, uh, <laughs> what guide pushed you the most as, as you wrote it in terms of, my guess is, you know, pushed you to the limits or frustrated you or really kind of... Well, the, the one that cost me my most sanity know, was Skyrim. Guy. It took 10 months. I mean, it took mm -hmm. 10 months, it's 788,000 words, it's 4,024 pictures, and um, doing all of that, now 10 months over the, it was, was, was how much it, it took, uh, but there were various iterations of it, and uh, you know, it wasn't just me in, in my shed going, oh my god, it was other people as well, so it wasn't just a one-man band, that's the other thing. Um, I need a support team and support staff, so it's not me just blindly wandering around, because if that happened, books would never get finished. So, the, you know, the co-authors that I have and the, uh, the people at Prima that help out, you know, and manage the project stop stop this, this, uh, the insanity from getting, you know, to biblical proportions. There's, it takes it takes a That's village right. to raise a strategy, guys, <laughs> and we all go together down the insanity rabbit hole when a that project like that comes up. And I think this is the the kind of insight that the people just aren't aware of. Uh, I saw somebody in chat just went, "Wow, ten months!" Like, 
Yes. You know, most of this stuff takes uh, an extraordinary well, amount of if you, hours. If you to put think together, that's for um, Skyrim, and this was, you know, divvied up over a, maybe two years, however long it took for Skyrim to initially come out and then have its final expansion, that was sort of cond condensed that time into sort of 10 months, uh, add a co author, and, um, and basically you, you've got, you know, how long it took. But um, there's the amount of hours that we played Skyrim for, uh, all told, was about six thousand. So if you if you actually figure out how long that is, it's you know, it's ten months, it's ten hour days, uh, and in the end, right? Yeah, this isn't your no, normal this, uh, nine to five. You, you have you have a special. You're either working twelve to fourteen hour days. Uh, with a couple of dog walks in between, or you just, you know, doing nothing. Which, um, just waiting. by the way, in case anyone's waiting. excited, and I know you it's aren't, a here's a blast from the past. This is the rarest book that I own. It is an uncorrected proof of the Half-Life 2 rating of Whoa. There's only oh, There was only the four of these printed. One of them was sent to Cliffy B., I don't think he's called that anymore. Um, and then another one to Dave Perry, who was the Earthworm Jim creator at Shiny Entertainment back in the day, uh, just for like blurbs. But this was a this was a book th uh, that had a load of additional chapters in that um, uh, that were then cut by Valve because uh, they wanted to sort of streamline the the book so it wasn't a, a massive tome. Uh, That's still kind of universally seen as one of the best collector's edition, behind the scenes, fan books of, this, of all time. Yeah, people Maybe. love that book. They oh, mention yeah. it to us so all this is the time. So this is an even more extensive version, sort of an early version of this. Uh, it also has a section with like a load of mods from the early years. So uh, so that was that's fun. That is very cool. So we had another good question from Parallax Error, who asked uh, what your favorite Easter egg has been. Aside from in a book. the uh, aside from the one that I discovered in uh, Witcher, which we talked about, um, right? right. Named after you, and um, <laughs> the I, I mean that's obviously uh, my favorite one. But uh, oh, Easter eggs. The problem is. Sometimes you're not allowed to put Easter eggs in. So I've, I've seen stuff and I've gone, right. oh, that's hilarious. Oh, I can't say anything. Um, but uh, I'd have right. to go with uh, with my namesake in Novigrad. Yeah, that's a good one. That's, that's a good one. That's pretty cool. I, I personally was really fond of, and I don't know if it's so much an Easter egg, but um, when you were working on Fallout 4 and you knew... Uh, in particular areas, exactly how many cats mm, I remember, were yeah. in that that's, location. Yeah, that's that was, the, uh, I was fond that of that. That is the problem that I have. Uh, up until about 2015, I could tell you everything possibly that you could want, like off the top of my head, uh, that you could possibly want to know about Skyrim or, uh, until 2014. And then that part of my brain, was, uh, it, the information was replaced with all of the stuff from The Witcher. So, uh, because there's such a colossal amount of stuff, I then have to go back into my guides to sort of reminisce. Uh, so there's, there's, so, there's such a deluge of information that you get, because I do open world games. So you're going like, oh, this yes. one's got 150 quests and uh, 300 locations, and all of it's got to be mapped and written in, in three months. And then, and then you stop, yeah. you have a week off, and then you start another project that's the same. So that's the, and it's an and entirely new, yes. So it's also it's also almost worth the author doing a franchise so that they can hit the ground running, so to speak. That's hit the ground running. So they're really right. familiar. Yeah, that makes sense. Sin speaking of franchises, Sinful Haley was asking what your favorite which request um, was. Now then, I liked oh now. You, Haley is a big Witcher 3 fan. Yeah. And she's it, probably our my favorite our area was Skellige. So I because uh, I enjoyed the um, haunting music. Um, I liked oh I liked the one uh, can't remember the name of it because it's been replaced with Far, Far Cry Five knowledge. But uh, it's the one where you had that um, 
you had that horse's skull. You'll be able to tell me. She'll be able to tell me. That, uh, and it's uh, it was a... Um, yeah. Because it was based on a, a Croatian uh, myth. Uh, it's a lot of a lot of the missions were the the, the other one where you um, you went into the forest to figure out uh, who was killing the villagers, and there was that uh, those creatures that look like trees. You, you could tell I'm I'm getting on a bit because I'm losing my I'm losing my uh, my knowledge of Witcher because it's 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 been the the, the it's been passed to the players now. And my brain has vacated that information. It's been replaced with, oh, Hope County. Let me tell you about Hope County. I think that's fair. <laughs> hey, all right. So we, we talked about it, a l briefly mentioned it. How do you keep your sanity then? What is, where do you uh, get your peace of mind? I bet this the, um, helps. The pup, the, uh, Loki. The pup. Loki. Yeah. Loki. Yes. Hi. Uh, she's uh, she's a good girl. Uh, my wife helps as well because uh, if I didn't, you know, because basically you're stuck here ten hours a day, so you don't see anybody. Um, and then also, I like to do as uh, I like to grow succulents. And you're being uh, coy about it. You've got quite the succulent collection, uh, which is I think really really cool because it's a it's kind of a huge departure from gaming and having to remember everything as a as opposed to just kind of a, a peaceful <laughs> very zen approach One to might think unwinding that, but each of so these plants I has a latin that. name no not all and of you them. remember all well, of those and you have some <laughs> fairly rare plants okay. as well right i mean you're you're a collector this is kind in the of garden the gardening well. equivalent of pokemon so let me uh, <laughs> let me show you what i'm talking about Oh, it's actually bright. And, uh, I know you guys had a you know a tiny smattering of rain, so yeah, everyone there was a, survived, a small, right? Uh, yeah, there was a, a small. Hey, uh, sit. Good girl. There was. <laughs> there was a pretend well. downpour, and everyone freaked out. And now, uh, but yeah, just, uh, yeah. Everyone in chat, your eyes will have like to adjust to the daylight. But Brace yourselves. Oh my goodness, that is, is remarkable. Beautiful. So this is, I don't know if the, uh, so this is, uh, the quality of the image has improved or not. Oh, looks beautiful. So yeah, this is the aloe speciosa with the seeds, because it's just flowered, you see. And then the garden is, uh, well, it's tended to by a skeleton staff. Oh, humor. <laughs> I uh, grow mainly, as you can see, uh, it's a nice aloe, aloe Hercules. I grow aloes and uh, agaves. And... Uh, Here's another. Here's another. <laughs> so if, if any of you have been on the stream before when David has joined us for tours of open worlds, um, you can often hear those same wind chimes in the background. Yeah. This is why, because he has this yeah. sort of idyllic uh, garden right There's outside of his office. The yeah. All right, cool. I'll, I'll come back in. Because right. only I'm interested <laughs> in succulents. <laughs> I think it's really neat, though. I, I think people will appreciate the fact that you know you do have other hobbies we outside don't of gaming. We keep you locked in there forever. <laughs> well, just it's also a good. Uh, uh, it's a completely different hobby to video games because if your hobby becomes your job, it no longer becomes your hobby. So you have to find something else. So I did, um, but it also allows me to take breaks. Right. It puts my Stardew Valley gardening machine <laughs> <laughs> back into the darkness. All right. Well, David, I certainly appreciate you taking some time today to, to sit and walk us through no everything worries. and talk with us. Um, no we'll, worries. we'll let you get back to uh, whatever it is you do. Well, I shouldn't say that. I already know you're on another project. Right. Right. <laughs> I was going to say during your he's downtime, got, but got, you're not on do. downtime. <laughs> All right. Um, so we will, I'll follow up with you after the stream today and we'll figure out exactly how to make Tuesday work. But, um, you know, we look forward to having your hands-on tour um, of Hope County. County. Yeah. Awesome. All right. I appreciate it, David. We'll Thank talk you, to David. you later. Thank you. Can you, or do you want me to? Whoa. <laughs>
good. <laughs> um, I know we didn't get to some of your questions for David, but hopefully you'll come back on Tuesday and you'll have him for a little bit longer and you can ask him uh, more questions. Yeah. That was really cool. And I, I loved that. I mean, I could sit and stare at the treasures in his office mm -hmm. forever because I mean, he has collected so much stuff over the years. We feel like it's a really successful stream when we have a dog cameo or a really cool collectible or some interesting facts or behind the scenes stuff. That tour just had all of it. All of it. All of it. Including Loki the dog. But this is why this is why David is like, you know, Top, top, top tier. Yeah. He's, I mean, he is genuinely such a cool dude mm -hmm. on top of that. And, I mean, you heard him rattle off, like, 8,000 pages and this right. many words. And I mean, for all his protests of I've forgotten so much. Oh, my god, There gosh. is so much stored in there. He, he's a beautiful mind. <laughs> he's <laughs> borderline rain man. It, it's fantastic. Um, oh, is it National Puppy Day, Control Freak? That is... Awesome. Now I wish I'd brought mine. Who who knew? Next yeah. time. Next time. Next time. Uh, next year. We'll remember, right. the, <laughs> remember the date. So is there a separate date for puppy day versus dog, dog day? Dog day? I don't know. I mean, we'll have to research. Yeah. I'm not plugged into the internet right now because I'm here. Right. And again, I do appreciate you sitting in today. I'm having a great time. Good. Good. Um, I think... That's a great segue into... Oh, me not having a great time anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the perks of being a guest on our show is you get to eat from the box of joy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> your, your clever renaming of the box won't, the fly, change, yeah. won't change things. No. <laughs> uh, so, as I, as I did for... Papa G last week, I think the one fair thing to do is allow you to remove one item. All right. I am happy with that. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and <laughs> jump into that. And I have to commend you again because you did also eat a cricket last that week. Was, that was my decision. You came in decision. and jumped in and you're like, you know what? I, yeah, when you eat crickets, I you let know me know like. I'm going to eat mm -hmm. one. I thought it was okay. I, I didn't, I didn't think like it, it. I know you you didn't, and I I mean like, it's not my new favorite food, <laughs> but I feel like if you you know roasted a couple of those up and threw them in a taco with some some like nice salsa or something, yeah, probably wouldn't be at the worst taco ever. Um, I will say, and I didn't have to eat the amount Papa G did. I just had one, but uh, the part I didn't like about it was you know the initial like flavor profile and the crunchiness and all of that was fine. But for the rest of the day, if I talked a little bit, I would kind of unearth little Ooh, bits of yeah. leg or wing that had kind of gotten wedged in there. So that was a really long experience for just a single cricket. Consumed. Yeah. And see, that's what I didn't like about it was the, was the texture and how it kind of broke apart. Mm -hmm. I, like, I thought it was like a puffed edamame or something. It was like a little puffed, crunchy. Yeah, with an exoskeleton. Well, it didn't, yeah. feel, it didn't feel texturally distinct. It felt the same to me all the way through, so I don't mind. It's when there's like lots of different textures in the same thing that grosses me out. Yeah. So that will inform the difficult decision of what I uh, remove from the box. Hey, Floam. Oh, Haley, we are totally ordering that. Um, I showed it to Prima Julie too, and she was like, this is happening. What is this? We, uh, there's this earthworm jerky that you can buy. Wait, wait, wait. And it earthworm looks, it looks jerky? It looks so bad. The picture on the package <laughs> is gross. And the same company also makes a dehydrated scorpion that you can eat. Ooh. So we, um, Haley let us down a really good, like, internet shopping wormhole. Thanks, yeah, Haley. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. And Haley's a team Juki. She must know that. It's, it's okay. Like, I feel like even if they're on one of our teams, ultimately their loyalty is to each other. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and and they're the going to do what it takes to make this the most fun and entertaining <laughs> it can be. And that's why we love them. And that's why we love it. And that's why we're all for it. And I, I look forward to it. And it, it does make us play harder because I do not want to eat that garbage. And I think somebody uh, mentioned earlier, like, how is it that Juke's only eaten a few things? Or, he's because he's a winner. Because I'm good. Because <laughs> I win. And when all you do is win, 
You don't have to eat. <laughs> right. That's the, that's the, and if you don't compete at all, then you have no choice. You have to eat. I like it. That's my moral take on it. That's why I'm subjecting myself to All this. right. So let's see what's still in here. Okay. And then I'll let you decide which you want removed from the box. We'll have you draw. Fair. Okay. Fair. So the double salt licorice still exists. Love it. Love it. All right. The Lod Chong drink with konjac jelly. I, I even brought in a clear vessel in case I draw that one because I think it'll be super gross to pour. Yeah, because it's, it's nasty inside. So I'm ready. I'm ready for that. But I don't know. Of everything in the box, I feel like even though that it's might be like good. chunky, weird green milk. It looks gross, but it might taste nice. It might nice. taste okay. It might so be, yeah, I'm, I'm it might all right with that. The spoonful of Marmite, which... That's real food. Yeah, but a spoonful sounds gross, right? Uh, Everyone says a light kind of spreading. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Do we do we have a spoon? Right there. Waiting. Oh, okay. I just I was like, what size spoon are we talking here? Okay, <laughs> this is an acceptable spoonful. The Giovanni's lobster pate with sherry that's, in a can. That's gross to me. That one's I know. Gross. I still feel like it should be refrigerated or something, uh, but it says it's it doesn't. I don't I don't like to think about it. I mean, the number one ingredient is lobster. Okay, but it's in a can. Yeah, I, I just don't like the that, idea I of that I eat canned tuna, so I can't say a whole lot I in this conversation. I eat canned tuna, but that is also like moose. <laughs> it's moose. I've never had a moose can of something. We do have the prepared shredded squid, plain flavor. How much of that would I have to eat? We have it written down as one serving. But I could do like a pinch, right? Yeah, and it's a reseal resealable bag, so okay. we can throw this back in there and... You can have just, you know, um, right, a healthy, right. a healthy pinch. Okay. Healthy all right. pinch. All right. Yeah, that's what I think. This, this lobster thing, this seems like cat food to me. I, I totally agree with that. Uh, and then we have the infamous gummy ghost pepper. I'm uh, pretty scared of that. Cherry flavored. I don't have to, I mean, it's the end. If, if I had had to eat that at the beginning, I'd be really worried because I would just cry the whole right. time and contribute nothing. <laughs> and then finally, the chocolate dipped insects. Okay. Which, All right. I'm, I mean, I've, I've already proven myself right. in, the, in the insect. Having realm, now so. eaten a regular ex insect dipped in chocolate, it's probably fine. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like a chocolate covered Rice Krispie treat yeah, or something. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. All right. I, I would like to veto this one. You'd like to remove the the pate? Yeah. Spoonful of lobster pate is gone. Out. Thank you. I all appreciate right. that. Do you want to put that in there? Uh, yeah, we'll put it all in here and okay. see. See, is there one that you're you kind guys of? Are, you guys are rooting for the ghost pepper. <laughs> Thanks. Is there anything I appreciate that. Kind of hoping for? Um. Well, I've already kind of done the licorice thing, so I feel like I could, I could soldier through that. Um, yeah. I, I'm not excited about the drink, but like you said, it might be okay. Yeah. Um. I'm not. I'm not psyched about the squid, although that's a legit food item. I don't know. I, I would, I'll take my chances. I'm cool with it. This does say shake well as product may contain natural sediment. That's why I brought the cup <laughs> so that we could really appreciate the, uh, All right. the sediment. Whew. I know. It's this scary. part is hard. It, this is the scariest <laughs> part yeah, of the I whole thing. I don't love it. Because you just want your, your hand to guide you. Spoonful of Marmite. I'm, I kind of, I kind of did this. I'm kind of glad. I made it. We <laughs> talked about it so much that it had to happen. All right. How All long right. has the spoon been sitting in here? Uh, a while, right? A while. Let's, Cause this, let's give one. it a little dusting. What flavor is the drink? It's some kind of fruit that I've never heard of. And it has konjac in it, which Juki knows as some kind of edible root, but it's I know sort of as a root. thing that you make a sponge out of and rub on your face. It so, just says Lod Chong drink with konjac jelly. So I, I don't really know what that means. We've got the bucket. It's here, but I'm not going to need it. Let's uh, be real. The number one ingredient is water, followed by konjac jelly, sugar, non-dairy creamer. Oh, mm, non-dairy. Coconut milk. Uh, some color dyes. Cognac. Dyed. I wish it was cognac. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my hope, Centauri. I hope that my love of beer will get me through this. Is it supposed to be sort of... It's a derivative of... It's a byproduct of beer. It's brewer's yeast. So Why would anybody intentionally just spread that on things? Because it's salty and umami. And what culture is this... 
a very well-known food cult- food culture, which you may have heard of, the British. Uh, <laughs> Australians makes, too. Australians too. Makes a lot of sense. Okay. Can I smell it? Yeah, you're yeah. welcome to smell it. <laughs> Ew, it's like... It's viscous. It is viscous. Wait, it does not pour out. <laughs> it looks like a gel. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like jelly. Beer you can spread. I, I appreciate this. Centauri is kind of helping me no, psych up for it. I don't like it. It smells... Doesn't smell like food. It does not smell like beer. Uh, I got a little whiff of beer there. Like beer and soy sauce. Yeah, that's exactly what it <laughs> smells like. It smells like beer and soy sauce. So I'm going to take the amount of spoonful that I think is uh, going to be... Right. Oh, look Ooh. at that. Oh, God. Viscous. So I did a natto challenge once with you. That, yes. This has a similar level of viscosity. It, There's it kind of a, um, I don't know if you can see this. It has a, a film on the top, like cold hot cocoa. There's a there's an oxidized film, and then underneath it's sort of a different color. Um, no, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> fill it, fill it. I see the suggestion. I just, I like, I feel like the sodium amount is so much that it would be dangerous to oh, eat too much. So right. I'm going to plead out on as, health reasons. As a guest, I'm going to let this Thanks. go. If, if it was Guardo, Guardo I know he would you, have a heaping spoonful. Or had Guardo All right, made they're this. saying it's not a spoonful. I'll get a little bit more. I mean, I'm not going to totally. <laughs> Don't let them pressure you I'm not going to totally wimp out you, on this, but. That reminds me of natto so much. Right? <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have never had had natto, it's it's fermented soybeans and it's uh, Japanese. How old is that? It's not. I don't think it goes bad. I have till December. Oh yeah, it's fine. Juki don't matter. Only chat. Nah. I mean, it, that's a spoonful now. Um. I'm happy with that. I don't understand why there's two colors going on. It's the, the, it's like the film on top of hot chocolate. Ugh. It's exactly what it is. All right. <laughs> uh, is it time? Do it. <sighs> it is really sticky. <laughs> it's still on the spoon. It's like... It is so sticky. Is it salty? It's super salty. Would you ever spread that on toast? Or anything. <laughs> don't, don't throw up. No, I'm not going to. It's just, it's really incredibly salty. <clears throat> it is savory. At first, it kind of tasted like when you deglaze the pan after you've cooked some beef. Okay. Which was nice. And then it got super salty. And then the texture hit me, which was horrible. <laughs> um, and then it started to get, I, I, there's a little bit of like a beer aftertaste. Okay. Um, I mean, I could lick the spoon and finish this and not die. But like having that much in my mouth was gross. I think a thin layer on some toast, I would try. Yeah. I would try it. Yeah. Would you dip a cricket in it? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? I mean, the bacon and cheese flavoring on that cricket was barely discernible no 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 so if you wanted to give it a little bit of savoriness this might be a nice i'm sorry i'm getting distracted by the facts that are in here i like to learn something after this experience so that's great gordo you feel like i i did right by you here i mean he's sick this might people are disappointed did, cure did him you, did you think i i um didn't react strongly enough because i it was gross <laughs> <laughs> I am completely fine with natural reactions to it. Yeah. And, I mean, I had the cod popcorn, and I think oh. I had... <laughs> I just stuck the spoon to the guide right there. Oh, it's going to be a surprise for somebody later. With the, with the cod popcorn, sticky? I thought for sure that it was going to be so horrible uh -huh. that when I had it, it was almost a, a relief. Even though it was gross, it was not as bad as, as I built in my mind. And so eating it was kind of pleasant. And it pissed Guardo off. <laughs> I thought that would be better than it was. Really? I mean, I didn't hate it, but um, boy, that viscosity. Yeah, that's... That was that was legit. It was like natto. It mm -hmm. kind of made me go... Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm going to have to go uh, do a palate cleanse after, but something. Something. I 
I think it's fair this afternoon I owe you a beer for right on for filling I'll take in. It. Uh, it's not fair that you have I beer did, remnants. And I not did the get my full thing. intake of salt for the day out of that spoonful. <laughs> I believe that. But to be fair, I didn't turn green. It didn't make me sweat. I think Guardo has had to eat some much worse things. Yeah, I think Guardo's anchovies. That was rough. That was rough, and I wasn't even in the room. Yeah, I think what made that so bad was his entire jar. He says the worms were worse. I didn't. I didn't get to try those. I would if I had been here that day. You would have tried. I would have tried the, the worms. worms. Yeah. I was not interested. I thought. I mean, I thought the worms sounded way more hard to eat than the crickets did. But I was like, okay, for science, I'll yeah. try this. You know which one? I think you know. In probably another thirty years, we'll have to eat bugs regularly <laughs> if we survive that long. So I'm like, let's let's just see what we're in for. Um, but yeah, anything that has. Like, like we were talking about it. The crickets were dry. Yeah. I feel like those worms had uh, meat to them. Mm. A, a, te- a contrast in texture is what will get you. I, I think I'm probably most scared at this point of the... The, the ghost pepper. The ghost pepper gummy. I'm scared of it too. I, I mean, I'm quite glad that this and, is what I got. And it's not even so much that it's, it's ghost pepper. I, I think that I would be okay with having a little bit of ghost pepper... But the gummy aspect of it means it's going to be... It's going to stay. It's going to linger. And it's going to adhere to your gums <laughs> and burn your face off. Yeah, right? I think you're right about that. And, I, uh... and then we're going to try and play games afterwards, and it's it we're just going to be a sobbing mess. That will be a tough day. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like, too, thanks to some viewer suggestions, maybe we'll have some worm jerky coming up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, I mean, the, just the visual on that is going to make you, it's going to be hard to eat. I had, uh, m- my dad lives in um, the Carolinas, and he had just seen a news piece on the person that does the Carolina Reapers, mm-hmm. like which is now apparently the hottest pepper, more so than the Even ghost, the ghost pepper. pepper. Yeah. And he called me, he's like, hey... Turns out they're local in my city. Would you like me to go by the shop and and get something? I know that you guys do that weird stuff on your stream. <laughs> like, yes. Really? Do it as long as you find some sort of jerky or something along those lines. Just it's, a, that's it's something food. seasoned, not like a full pepper to eat. Right. I don't want the pepper, and I don't necessarily want just hot sauce. Because what do you put it on? Like hot sauce on a cracker? Like, you know. But it turns no, out. No. Yeah. I think he's the person that did the um, the one chip challenge. If you guys saw that, the the boxes that just had a single chip in it, and it mm-hmm. was like the hottest chip in the world or whatever. Yep. So I think that's local to him. So he's like, I'll go check it out and see what I can find for you. <laughs> All right. So we may have that coming up at some point too, which... That could just be a special feature, not involving any kind of competition. Yeah, just who can survive just, or, just or everybody who... Everybody try it. Yeah. Then nobody has to consume the whole thing. <laughs> so, this is my concern. Is, Everybody uh, come in and try. Let's share the pain. I, I like that you want to disperse it out so everyone gets a little pain as opposed to one person is dead. Right. Though, I mean, Helba keeps pointing out that if you do die from eating something out of the box, you get a major promotion. I become immortal and yeah. she puts a black light poster of me <laughs> I, on her wall. I value her rankings, obviously, because I'm number one, but I don't know if it's worth it. <laughs> but, I mean, if I could be a black light poster on her wall right there with Biggie, Tupac, and Elvis. Shh. Yeah. All right. All I'm, right. I mean, it's pretty cool. Eternal life right there. Yeah. All right. Uh, is it time? Is it time to, to switch over and do some game stuff? Yeah, you know, right I'm now. I'm gonna go get some water. <laughs> I will let Ooh. you. I will let you get out of here. Um, everyone in chat, please thank Data for for filling in for a sick Guardo. Uh, I certainly appreciate you stepping up and, and helping me out today, um, and stepping up for the box of doom. I you know you were a soldier. I I do it for the people. <laughs> for the people. This wasn't for me. No, this it wasn't was for, for you. you. <laughs> um no, it was my pleasure to be here. I have really missed being able to come in and hang out and chat with everyone, so um this was great and I I'm I'm even glad that I uh, got to come out from behind the the desk. Yeah. Although I know you guys miss hearing me type. 
every stream they they talk about how horrible Guardo and I are, <laughs> and, and that they miss That's data. Nice. I like that they they keep you honest. They make you continue to strive uh, for to sure. be better. Um, so yeah, and I I just I thought David's cameo was awesome, and I can't wait to come. Well, I, I won't be here, but I can't wait to see what you do on Tuesday. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to it. That was, I'm yeah. I'm so glad. Thank you for your help in, in making the the Skype work. I think that's really cool. I love the fact that now we've done it, we're able to do that in the future. Yeah, bring other I hope authors we in. bring some more authors to do cameos. I think that's a, a really good thing. And Fridays before our game launch, I think just makes sense. Yeah, um, I love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and oh, we do have giveaways coming up with the wheel. So if everybody wants to start typing Prize the word wheel. spin into chat, S P I N. Um, you guys can start being logged into our giveaways. Um, it is North America only. You guys know that I get called by legal a lot, so we let's, talked about it earlier. Even. Let's stick to uh, let's stick to that, please. Um, also, if you're not currently following us, go ahead and click that button as well, so you guys get updates for when future streams are on. When we go live. Um, so we'll do the spin in a little while. And I think I will switch over and we'll start some Sea of Thieves, sea of Thieves and see if anybody wants to join in on that and play live with oh, me. Oh, we were supposed to give Centauri 20 minutes notice. Oh, well, we'll see what he can manage. We'll see what you can manage. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. Oh, we do have a Far Cry 5 game and guide giveaway that is taking place right now. Uh, if you follow us at Prima Games on Twitter or on it's our Facebook, Facebook page, um, after this stream, I'll make sure there's a link and there'll be something going out. Or if you're subscribed to our newsletter, uh, it's already live on our newsletter. Or Prima Rob will potentially put the link into chat for yeah. you. But you guys can go fill out the form and be entered to win a copy of the game and the guide. So that'll be going through Tuesday. And then we'll also have game and guide giveaways throughout our stream on Tuesday. So Can't wait. Lots of cool looks stuff. Like, um, looks like Jasper is going to... Hop in the game with you. Sweet. Yeah. Sure. All right. So we will make sure that happens. Uh, do me a favor. Talk to the people for one second. Yeah, I can do that. And uh, I'll get it set up here. Okay. Sounds good. Um, boy, now that's I'm really on the spot. I usually have so much to say to you all. Um, nope. Totally drawing a blank. You guys aren't chatting about anything, so there's nothing for me to <laughs> hook into. Um, I I'm I never am here when he spins the wheel. So I never get to see the prize giving part of the process, but I always can hear from my desk, the tick, 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 spin. Um, and I love the whole my name on your shirt thing. I, I think we concocted a plan a couple weeks ago, me and Amber and Haley and Helba to, to get one where uh, Juki has to wear the Team Data shirt. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm not trying to unduly influence any of you, but if you ever, if you ever spin that wheel and you win that and you're not sure what you want to put on that shirt, uh, Team Data. Team Data would be fun. Just saying. <laughs> Happy Gamer is asking, how is my settlement? I haven't, I haven't been able to go visit my settlement in a while. Um, sadly, it's kind of neglected. Um, I've been, I, I think you all know, I've been uh, really busy working hard lately and as David pointed out, there's not so much time for gaming when you're working on gaming. It's a little crazy. Yeah. You ready? You're going to switch over? Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone, for um, having me and being so nice, and I'll see you in chat soon. Thanks, Data. All right. We should. Except I don't have a game.
So bear with me a second. I think I I broke it. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing I am still sitting here. <laughs> and to think I was I was so, so pro confident. level on my button pushing. Yeah. Uh, but let's let's try this out. Hold on. <laughs> 